Today, we're gonna make a rose hydromel. I've never made this before, but I think it'll be cool. Let's try it. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, I am making a rose hydromel, something I have never made before. Um, I have this rose compound from Amoretti that I've been sitting on for a while. I've wanted to use it for some various things. I've already made a rose mead before, I haven't made a rose hydromel, so I thought, why not try this? Here's the recipe I'm using up here. This is for a half gallon recipe. So it is roughly about three eighths of a gallon of water. Um, and then we are using about 0.6 pounds of honey. And then we are gonna be using the Lalvin EC1118 alongside, of course, some rose compound. Now, this rose compound smells and tastes exactly like rose, which I find fascinating. It's so weird. But uh, this is a product that has sugars in it, so the yeast will ferment through this. What I'm gonna do here, I am going to take, first of all, and do a gravity reading, because that's important, but also I'm gonna take and add some rose compound to get the flavor of this mead. I should also mention I pre-made my must just to save the time and effort. So that's that I used that recipe. I just made it already. Um, everything has been sanitized. Again, step one, if you've never made a mead, step one is to sanitize everything. This is star sand water. I spritz everything with it to ensure there is no bad bacteria that take over. Our starting gravity on this thing is our starting gravity is 1.040, which is roughly about a 5% mead. It is below the hydromel range, but we have sugars from this Amoretti Rose compound. Let me go ahead now and uh, I'm gonna add some compound flavor and then taste test until I feel like we get to a point where the rose is strong enough. Okay, I've mixed in exactly two uh, ounces of the rose compound and it's at a good point. It's definitely sweet, but you get the rose flavor in there. Oh yeah, I mean, that's sugar water right now, but it tastes fantastic. So now our next step after we have mixed all of our ingredients is to add our yeast. I have my Lauven EC1118 yeast that I'm gonna add right now. It's great for meads, wines. It retains honey character well, in my opinion. Um, it's just a great yeast. So I've already used a lot of this yeast. There's one gram left in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it right on top. And that, of course, is going to wake up and start fermenting whenever the yeast are ready. So we are ooh, now at the point, making a little bit of a mess, where we want to go ahead and put an airlock on, put my uh, ingredients and, and list everything about this meat down, and then let it ferment. So let me do that real fast. I also forgot, <laughs> I did say this earlier, the rose um, flavoring has sugar in it. So the new gravity after we added the new sugar is actually 1050 or 1.050. So we're above where we were before, but that's okay. Um, I knew that was gonna happen. So we're still underneath the hydromel range. Uh, also, I wanna say, could I have done this with rose petals instead of this extract? Of course. But at the end of the day, I have this rose petal, uh, rose extract, and I thought it would be good. So now we're ready to take our airlock, put it on, and our ingredients and, and uh, information is down already. Let's let this thing ferment through the primary, come back after that, and see how it tastes. All right, and we're back with the rose hydromel. This is six weeks old. I have been real lazy. I haven't touched it. I've been busy with other projects. Um, I'm pretty sure it's done fermenting. You can see here, it's very clear. I mean, that thing, other than the lights behind, is super clear. I'm trying not to disturb the yeast too much. Let's take a gravity reading. All right, our current gravity is 1.000. We have finished dry. So, well, out through all the gravity. Started at 10.50 at 1.000. That's something around the realm of like a 6. Point, ooh, I'm gonna be wrong here. 6.6% .6 ABV, I think. Let's taste it. Wow. Okay, so this is the nose. It's kept the rose really well, like that the rose um, aroma. I was a little worried about that being blown off, but you can still get it. It's not very sweet, obviously. Ooh, and the, the honey character really supports the rose. It has a um, some some nice body, surprisingly. I didn't think that this would have a lot of body, to be frank, but I'm 
pleasantly surprised by this. Again, the body is what's very shocking to me. And um, I, I do think that's a big attri or attribute to the yeast we use because I, I do believe yeast can help fill out a body of a mead. That's, that's awesome. I thought I was going to have to use some body boosting things, but I'm very pleased with that. All right, so here's my next plan. I am going to... Originally, my thought was if this wasn't going to be very full bodied to actually take in bottle carb it because it would help build out the body some in a light ABV mead like a hydromel generally tastes better if it's uh, carbonated. But since this tastes pretty good as is, I'm actually going to rack this over, stabilize it with potassium sorbate, and then we're going to add honey to back sweeten. All right, we've racked it over. Now, here's the deal. I said we were going to use potassium sorbate, but this thing is so clear. And I think I've racked it well enough, I hope I have, that I've gotten rid of all of the yeast that were in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kinda risk it. We are gonna back sweeten without stabilizing in any way. I, we're gonna see if this works. Theoretically, if I've racked this well enough and not gotten any yeast, there should be zero yeast in this brew. It's, again, six weeks old, almost seven weeks old, so it's got a lot of time. I'm gonna add as much honey as I need to get it to the sweetness level that I desire. Okay, I've added two ounces of clover honey, just keeping it basic, and it is at a pretty good level. That is, in my opinion, perfect because it has just enough sweetness to pronounce honey character, but also does not overshadow or you know kill the rose flavor you're getting. Now it's very floral, petally. Do I think that somebody's gonna be able to pick out rose specifically within this brew? Maybe, but they're gonna get a flowery taste more than anything. I know that it tastes like rose, mainly because I'm making it. So here's the deal. We're gonna put our, our airlock, back on, airlock back on this. Is there a chance that the yeast kickstart again? Absolutely. Ha, could I have not racked it well enough to get the yeast out? Yes. This is where uh, stabilizing is very helpful if you want to back sweeten. Let's see if my uh, attempt at not back sweetening uh, bites me. And yeah, a really stupid decision would be for me to go and bottle this right now. We've only added, oh, which reminds me, I grabbed your reading. We've only added two ounces of honey, but that's still enough to carbonate if this decides to, if I were to bottle it and then it referment. Let's get a gravity reading. Yeah, our new gravity is 1.010. So that's a fair amount added just with two ounces of honey, which is, by the way, an eighth of a pound of honey. Now, we're gonna let this sit. Let's come back and see, well, let's, let's see over the next few days if this decides to re-ferment. So, here we go. All right, so this has started re-fermenting again. I can tell you that because of two reasons. Number one, I see some action happening inside the meat itself. There's some bubbling fermentation process. There is more yeast buildup, so the colony has restarted. And our current gravity is, our current gravity is about 1.005. So here's what I've decided to do. This still tastes a lot, a lot like rose. It's a little bit dry. A lot of that sweetness we put in is gone, but it still has the nice hydromel, nice mead taste from the honey character. I mean, I like it how it how I like it how it is. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and bottle these, and I know that there will be a continuous fermentation, but 1.005 is not a lot. Like I can bottle safely, knowing that the there will be no bottle bombs. If you go higher, it can be a bit risky. So this will not create bottle bombs, and I'm very very certain of that. So. Here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead now and bottle it, cap it, cork it, all this, well not cork it, because we're putting these in uh, beer bottles, and then we'll come back. Now another thing, I could stabilize it and redo what I did, add more honey, and then for sure it wouldn't re-ferment. However, um, I kind of wonder what this will be like with a small amount of carbonation. So again, this is not gonna add a lot of carbonation, but maybe just a slight, fizz might uh, really bring this thing to a new level. We'll find out. Let's bottle it. Oh. I'm gonna 
come back after about two or three weeks from now and we're gonna taste test this and see if it has any carbonation. But that's been the bottling process. Let's go ahead and go over to the tasting now. All right, and here we are for the tasting. Um, I have it, it's been about three weeks, four weeks almost since I did anything, well, since I bottled it. And theoretically it should have some carbonation. Let's find out. Oh yeah, that's some carbonation built up. Let's go ahead and pour some now and see. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks good. Oh, looks crisp. Slight bit of carbonation on it. Man, very clear too. Of course, you know, when you put something in the fridge, it clears it up generally. It definitely, you definitely get the rose on the nose. Um, what a fun thing to say. Oh, it smells great. Let's try. Ooh. Yeah, the, um, the, I'll say this, the nose is definitely a little bit sweeter than the actual taste of it. And we knew that it was not gonna be sweet because the sugars have been consumed by the yeast. Now, I, I will say this, I stored this bottle in a cool place, uh, not a cool, in a normal room temp place to uh, bottle carbonate, and I put it in the fridge two days ago. So this, theoretically, it probably is completely out and done 1.000. Oh, this thing's great. The rose is really, um, really nice. It, it has this uh, body filling side that I didn't expect. This has a fuller body than I expected in general. Oh man, I'm a huge fan of this. Wow, definitely, I will definitely plan on making this again. Now, like I said before, could you make this with rose petals? Absolutely, and that's more so of a rotomel. This is not as much of a rotomel, um, to be honest, but it's still very good and the rose compound from Amoretti worked really well. So um, I would suggest if you wanna do this, you could do it in a still way, meaning that it's not carbonated. Um, you would actually use potassium sorbate and you would try to fully halt the fermentation um, and then back sweeten if you wanted to do that. Or if you want to do a sparkling version, you can actually uh, back sweeten with a thing called erythritol, which is a plant-based sugar that is um, more natural and it will it is non-fermentable. So that means that the yeast won't be able to eat the sugars within it and that is nice in its own way. It'll keep it being sweet. Then you back sweeten with priming sugar, possibly honey, something like that to bottle carbonate. Or you could do, you could stabilize the mead and then ultimately keg it if you wanted to do that. This thing's really good. I was honestly, I knew that 1.005 was not enough to cause too much carbonation, but there's always that thing in the back of your mind that says, what if? And so I was a little nervous, but it's perfect. I'm a huge fan of this. You should go make it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will leave a like and subscribe and all those things. And I hope you will um, try and comment something below about how you've made or about a mead you've made. I'd love to hear about that. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you.